Hi, I'm Tenshi, and today is May 20th, Scratch's 15th anniversary. Now, for all of you Zoomers who are probably younger than Scratch, it was a game-making engine that worked with these sprites, and you could have backgrounds, and everything was programmed with these basic little programming blocks that you could stick together, and it would teach kids about programming, and you could make these simple little games. Now, you'd probably not think much of the Scratch engine when you first saw it. I mean, it seems pretty basic, you know, even childish compared to programming like you traditionally would with a programming language that's typed, obviously. However, this engine is actually incredibly powerful and people have pushed it to such extreme limits. And that's what I want to take a look at in this video, some ridiculously impressive Scratch projects. But before I do that, I just wanted to say that Scratch is basically the only reason I'm into computers nowadays. I think it was third grade ICT class. They were teaching us boring stuff like HTML, how to use PowerPoint, and stuff that you'd teach in a computer class just so kids are basically competent with computers. But one day the teacher just pulled up Scratch and it, to me it was like this shocking thing. It was all Adobe Flash back then. I remember going home from school and going online looking as many tutorials as I could possibly find on how to make a platform in Scratch because I just really wanted to make a platform like a game where you could jump around like Mario and I, I watched some really long tutorial on how to do it and I was just so happy to be programming like that and I think that's really one of the main reasons I got into computers and if it wasn't for Scratch I probably wouldn't be here so so yeah thank you to whoever at MIT came up with Scratch. Anyways tearjerker aside let's actually take a look at some impressive Scratch projects. The first one I want to take look at is getting over it with Scratch. It's even got narration and everything, so yeah, let's take a look. Oh, there you go. Alright, there's the world record. Uh, the world record is actually managed by this cloud system. I didn't know they had this, but apparently Scratch now has cloud variables where people can submit stuff to your project and it can be stored and all users can see it. And over here we have a high score and somebody apparently beat this entire game in less than a minute, so yeah, good on you. <laughs> Anyways, I'm probably not gonna do it. Here we are, getting over it with Scratch. You might take this for granted, but programming something like this with the physics of a hammer, being able to push yourself, is no small feat. And it's no small feat in like a programming language, but it's definitely no small feat. What all you've got to work with is, is blocks, right? Uh, so let's take a look at how this goes. I'm not gonna go for any speed runs because I know that's incredibly complicated. Let's see. All right, so over here, over here. There's no feeling more intense and starting over. There's the narration. If you've it's broken a scratch project moments after you've shared it, then what you're about to go through may be too much. This game is pain. <laughs> At least Feel he admits free it. to go away and come back. And remember to pause oh, the game no. by pressing P. No. <laughs> On Scratch, you can find loads of remix still okay. reimagined. Well, I think that's pretty much it for what I could probably get accomplished in this video game. As everybody who watches my channel know, I am awful at video games. So let's try something else. Now, this game, still by Griff Patch, is Paper Minecraft. I remember this fondly because as a kid who couldn't afford Minecraft, uh, I was always playing the versions you could find on online websites that were free. So let's try playing this. Here we are, Paper Minecraft. WASD, mouse click, EF, all right. New game. Game mode. I'll, I'll go creative just so I can see what it's like. Here we go. All right. Wow. That's pretty cool. So I remember this being like very, very, like I had a lot of stuff in the inventory. Let's see. Ah, oh, yeah, there is stuff. There's building blocks, miscellaneous. Oh, there's mobs. I don't remember there being mobs. Okay, let's try spawning some mobs and spawning some water. And apparently you can spawn, yeah, houses. Oh, oh they have redstone in this? That's crazy. Let's take a look at that. All right. So how do mobs work in this? Oh. Did I break it? <laughs> Wait, am I meant to, how am I meant to place this? I, did I place it? Uh, oh, there it goes. Okay. How do I place the water? Um, oh, there it goes. That's really weird because it's like right clicking in my browser. So the water actually flows. That's insane. I wonder what they have in caves. It's a bit like Terraria, I guess. It's got like, you know, this underground section. It's all 2D. But yeah, I'm sure you can. Oh my. I fell into the death void. Oh no. It's not the death void. Oh, there's like this whole thing. Can I fly? Oh, that's cool. How do I go down though? Oh, like that. I can hear the spiders. Wait, why am I dying? I'm creative. Oh, check it out. Wait, what happened? Okay, well that was Paper Minecraft. Now let's take a look at something that's a little bit similar. Now for the next games I want to take a look at, they're actually very intensive to run using the regular Scratch engine. They're all still programmed in Scratch. However, using a tool called Turbo Warp, we can put any Scratch project and recompile it to much faster JavaScript. And there's a few examples that they have on their website. Like for example, Terraria. <laughs> I don't know if this is the whole game of Terraria because I've never played Terraria, but it sure looks like it. All right, here we are, Terraria. 
Let's load up a new game. Uh, I'll just generate a random character. Yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, and let's go. Let's see. Small world. So here we are in Terraria. Um, I've never played the real one, so I don't really quite know how it is. But I'm assuming this is very similar to it. Let's see. We got a sword. We can kill stuff. Okay. Check it out. We're destroying the flowers. So can I go into the ground? I don't know how Terraria works. Oh, here we are. Ooh. Was I not meant to go here? Oh, there's water here. Oh, I died. All right, here we are back in Terraria. I will say the pixel art here is fantastic. I'm assuming it's ripped straight from the game, but it looks really good even in Scratch. Anyways, I guess that's Terraria in Scratch. Now let's take a look at some other games. One of the most impressive things I've seen in Scratch is the Crystal Seeker 3D platformer. Yeah, that's right, you heard me right. 3D games in Scratch. The way these are accomplished is by using the pen tool, which is available in Scratch, which lets you basically draw any geometry you want. This doesn't mean it's easy to draw a 3D level, uh, and most everything done here has to be done with some very advanced techniques. Anyways, let's take a look at it. Uh, we're on a fast computer, and here we are, Crystal Seeker. Good. Bad. Bad stole the diamonds. Find all the diamonds. Okay. And so here we are with Crystal Seeker. Now Crystal Seeker is a basic platformer. Uh, you're this polygonal creature over here. Uh, I can get the coin. There we are. Five coins. Press space. Jump. Alright, seems pretty tame thus far. Basic little 3D level. Jump on it to vanquish. Not kill, to vanquish. What does vanquish mean? <laughs> and this has a camera. I don't know, that's still messing with me, like this whole 3D environment built entirely in Scratch. The way that geometry is constructed here is amazing, like there's there's sprites in a 3D environment, there are moving blocks and stuff, there's even basic animations with this little character, like he stretches up and stretches down when he jumps. This stuff is wild. I will say though, there's not much in the way of dynamic physics, not that I really expect it. Like when you move forward with this guy, he moves forward. When you stop pressing the key, he just stops instantly. Like I'm moving forward now. I'm just like walking about, then he just stops. There we are, the crystal. This is the level goal. All right, level two. Oh my gosh, passwords. All right, let's go, start level two. Plank, plank. Well, there's definitely some planks here. Oh my gosh, check that out. It's a plank that you can move dynamically. That is crazy, and it's like balancing itself. This still feels more like a technical demo than anything, but all the impressive stuff that's done in Scratch is still blowing my mind. Like, you gotta understand, when I was a kid, people were just making like basic stuff in this. It was just, you know, Mario or, I don't know, some painting program, or at most you get like some, something like 2D Minecraft, which is still, you know, hyper impressive. This just takes it to a whole other level. No wonder the games have to be recompiled to JavaScript. There's actually good level design too, like this platforming is pretty interesting. All right, we got the crystal second level completed. Hooray! I think that's all I'm gonna take a look at for Crystal Seeker, although I'm sure it's, it gets very interesting and lots of cool new game mechanics show up. I'll have every game here linked in the description if you want to take a look. Uh, and who knows, I might play this on stream. Alright, next up, we have Portal 3D Test Chamber 13. This is another impressive 3D game. This is actually Portal in, in Scratch. Alright, here we are. Ooh. If you become lightheaded from Thank thirst, you, feel free to pass out. An intubation right. associate okay, will so be dispatched to revive you R. with peptic okay. cell and adrenaline. I'll put a portal here. I'll get the cube and pass it through the portal. Okay, where's my cube? Why did it disappear? It closed the door. I can't get out. It's an ever-consuming void. I'm sorry. One interesting field of projects in Scratch is the 3D or like math generators. Like this one, for example, generates terrain, as you can see. Uh, what you can do is you can move around and rotate to see it, and then when you stop, it actually renders it higher. Uh, you can get texturing and stuff, like your yard generate texturing. We can have more erosion or less erosion. We can increase it, like for example, and run it, and as you can see, there's more erosion. You can change the source terrain, you can generate new terrain, keep generating with new noise, and increase the resolution to make it much cooler. There we are, big. Uh, and as you can see, it's just Perlin noise, I'm assuming. But yeah, check that out. It's cool terrain generation that looks 
quite nice in Scratch. Another cool one is the 2D physics engine. This one's pretty cool because it lets you basically create objects that interact with each other. This, yeah, this repels them and this, okay, this generates lots of little circles. I think demos like these are probably the most impressive because like imagine trying to program an entire little physics simulator in Scratch of all things. And I love all the different demos that there are in Scratch to demonstrate different cool things that you can get away with block programming. Anyways, that was pretty much everything I wanted to take a look at in this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching these different projects. I'll have links to each one of them in the description, like I mentioned before. I think my favorite was probably Crystal Seeker, just because it seems very interesting and cool and impressive. So definitely check that out in the description. But anyways, happy 15th anniversary, Scratch. I've been Denshi. Goodbye.